Manila was once a well-planned progressive mass transit-based city. The beautiful bustling urban center and the capital of the Philippines had a well-planned beginning. During the Spanish and American periods, Manila's public transportation is one of the most advanced in the region. With the Trandia traversing through the city, homes and development centers were built along its routes. Throughout the years, Manila's rapid development and urbanization expanded in its surrounding areas. With Metro Manila as now the Philippines Center for Finance, Commerce, Government, and Education, while Mega Manila is the center of the country's economy, manufacturing, and industrialization. Mega Manila progressed to what it is today. However, challenges comes with development. Daily traffic congestion is the fundamental problem Metro Manila is facing, which curtailed the nation's potential growth. And this is spreading to the surrounding areas of Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and Cavite. Without a present solution, these problems will worsen as the population steadily increases from 23 million to 30 million for Mega Manila by the year 2030, becoming one of the largest megacities in Asia. With these in mind, the Philippine governments create a doable long-term integrated infrastructure development for Mega Manila using transport as the catalyst for sustainable development aims to provide solutions to traffic congestion and to enhance connectivity within mega manila these are the biggest public transport projects in mega manila which will transform the megapolis into a premier mega city in asia pacific as the city regains its past glorious glory the biggest transformation of the Metro Manila railway system is the creation of the two subway systems of the country. The Makati Intra-City Subway and Metro Manila Subway. The Makati Intra-City Subway is a 10-kilometer under construction underground rapid transit line located in Makati City, Metro Manila, that will link establishments across the city's business district. The Makati Subway Project, the first of its kind in the country, intended to improve connections between districts and key points across Makati City, and reduce traffic on the city's road network, primarily through the Central Business District. The subway will cost 192 billion Philippine pesos and is expected to accommodate 700,000 passengers daily. It will also have 10 stations, with connections to the existing MRT Line 3, to the Pasig River Ferry Service, to Makati BGC Skytrain, and to the MRT Line 9 of the Metro Manila Subway. The Metro Manila Subway Project is one of the first two underground railway system projects in the Philippines, which aims to provide mass transportation in the national capital region. The first phase of the 33-kilometer subway connection costing 488.4 billion pesos, crosses seven local government units will run from Mindanao Avenue in Valenzuela City to the FTI compound in Taguig City, with a spur connecting to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Reaching a speed of up to 80 km per hour, the subway system will serve daily ridership from 400,000 to as high as 800,000. All 17 stations will be fully operational by 2028, with a design capacity of 1.5 million passengers per day. The longest rail project within Mega Manila is the PNR Bicol or the South Long Haul Project. The rail line will span 39 cities and municipalities, 4 provinces, and 2 regions stretching a 565-kilometer intercity rail line serving the southernmost of Mega Manila up to Bicol region. While the biggest rail project in the country is the PNR North-South Commuter Railway, envisioned as a 163-kilometer sub-urban railway network connecting the regional business districts in Clark and New Clark City in the north, passing through central Manila to Calamba City in Laguna Province, south of the capital. From the north, the NSCR Phase 1 will see developments of a 53-kilometer rail system north of the capital. 
This project covers the section from Malolos, a suburb north of Manila, to Clark and Clark International Airport in Pampanga, with 18-kilometer northern extension, from Clark to New Clark City. The inner part of the NSCR package covers the 38-kilometer central core, linking Totoban in Manila to Malolos City. The southern section would be the 55-kilometer southern corridor connecting Blumentritt in Manila to Calamba City. Once fully operational, the NSCR corridor is expected to carry up to 1 million passengers per day. In addition to four operational mass rapid lines of LRT Line 1, LRT Line 2, LRT Line 2 East Extension, and MRT Line 3, and the commuter rail line of PNR Totoban to Calamba. The Department of Transportation and the private sector build numerous rail projects to decongest Mega Manila, and it will build more in the future. The Metro Rail Transit 7 or MRT Line 7, which is now at 60% overall completion rate, will support essential operations, by end of 2023. These rail and road projects have three major components, a 22.8-kilometer mass rail transit system starting from North Avenue Common Station to San Jose del Monte Bulacan, a world-class intermodal transportation terminal that will serve as a transportation hub catering to other types of public transportation, and a 19-kilometer highway from San Jose del Monte to Bocaui Bulacan. The line will be operated with 108 rail cars in a three-car configuration or 36 train sets, and will be able to carry 28,000 to 36,000 passengers in an hour per direction. It can accommodate 300,000 passengers daily in its first year of operation, and up to 850,000 passengers once it will be fully operational. The LRT Line 1 Cavite Extension. The construction of the first phase of the 64 billion pesos light rail transit Line 1 Cavite Extension is now 73% complete, in a statement from LRMC, the private sector operator of LRT Line 1. Phase 1 of the 11.7 km LRT 1 Cavite Extension project, which covers a total of five stations, will add the existing 20.7 km of metro line serving the southern part of Metro Manila. Once completed, the 11.7 km extension will reduce travel time between Baclaran and Bacor Cavite to 25 minutes, from 1 hour and 10 minutes. In addition, it will also increase LRT Line 1 capacity from 500,000 to 800,000 passengers daily. The Philippines is currently building new international airports as a foundation of a world-class global aviation hub in the region. The new Sangli Point International Airport, adjacent to the heart of Metro Manila, is key to the Philippines airport system, Clark International Airport, and New Manila International Airport in the north. To complement the existing operation of Ninoy Aquino International Airport which is stretched to breaking point. Sangli Point International Airport, which will be the newest airport in Mega Manila, is located in the province of Cavite, south of Manila. This $10.9 billion airport project, is a joint consortium between the provincial government of Cavite, and local and international companies. Phase 1A of the airport projects will build a single runway and a new terminal building, supplementing the existing airport operations. It will cost $2.3 billion and will allow the airport to serve 15 million passengers a year. Phase 1B will add one runway, and enable the relocation of the existing airport operations to the new airport, it will require $2 billion to increase capacity to 25 million passengers. Phase 2, ultimate capacity can be increased with a third and fourth runway. That would be able to serve 75 million travelers a year, with one additional terminal building. The final phase is costing $6.6 .6 billion. Upon completion, the new airport can compete effectively with planned global aviation hubs in the country and the region.
While New Manila International Airport is a 2,500 hectares under construction airport city in Bulacan that will serve as the main aviation gateway in the Philippines, designed to handle 200 million passengers. This green airport city will cost $15 billion and will be built by San Miguel Corporation without any government subsidies. New Manila International Airport is part of the envisioned 12,000 hectares of Aerotropolis that features residential zones, commercial districts, government centers, a seaport, and an industrial zone. New Manila International Airport in Bulacan will be the first pace setter for green cities in the country. Addressing social and environmental concerns to be both sustainable and equitable. Another monumental project in the country is the completion of Metro Manila's extensive elevated expressways. Among these, is the construction of the 18-kilometer stretch of the Skyway Stage 3 project. Making the Metro Manila Skyway system, one of the longest flyovers in the world, with a total length of approximately 42 kilometers. This megastructure is the long-awaited solution to solving traffic, not just on EDSA, but also within the major thoroughfares in Metro Manila. It will cut travel time from the South Luzon Expressway at Susana Heights in Muntinlupa, to the Balintawak Toll Plaza of the North Luzon Expressway, to just 45 minutes. Magallanes to Balintawak will take only 15 minutes from 2 hours. Balintawak to Naya in 15 minutes while Balintawak to Makati in just 10 minutes. Supplementing the Metro Manila Skyway system is the 23.3 billion pesos and Lex, S Lex, connector project. It is an 8-kilometer, elevated four-lane toll expressway. Extending the NLEX southward from the end of Segment 10 in C3 Road in Caloocan City, to PUP Santa Mesa Manila, and connecting to the Skyway Stage 3, and mostly traversing the PNR rail track. The project includes two interchanges located at C3 Road in Caloocan, and 5th Avenue in Espana Manila. NLEX S Lex Connector, together with Skyway Stage 3 will connect every city in Metro Manila within a 30-minute time frame. Another project is the Southeast Metro Manila Expressway. It is new toll road project that will connect the province of Rizal, to the rest of Metro Manila and Calabarzo. Southeast Metro Manila Expressway, spans 34 kilometers of semi-elevated 2 by 3 lane tollway, from Skyway FTI, to Batasong Pombansa Complex in Quezon City. NLEX Harbor Link, the project involves the 21.6 km extension of the NLEX eastward from Valenzuela City, to M. Lopez Boulevard, R10. And westward from Valenzuela City to Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. Segment 10 is the second and final component of the NLEX Harbor Link. This engineering marvel will serve as a bridge to the harbor area. Reducing travel time to NLEX Valenzuela to Radial Road 10 from 23 minutes to just 11 minutes. Enabling unimpeded delivery of goods, 24-7. Laguna Lakeshore Road Network Project is a 37.6-kilometer new road network, at the western side of the Laguna Lake connecting Taguig City and Laguna in Calamba City. The three-lane primary road consists of an 11.8 km viaduct from Lower Bicutan to Muntinlupa, and a 25.8 km combination of onshore viaduct and embankment from Muntinlupa to Calamba, and these include eight interchanges. The new Laguna Lakeshore Road network will have three lanes per direction. The detailed engineering design is currently being carried out by local and Japanese construction firms and will last until February 2023. The new road network is expected to provide a faster alternative to motorists traveling south or north. It is also expected to boost the economies in central and southern Luzon. The Bata and Takavidi Interlink Bridge is a 32 km and 150 m four-lane cable stayed bridge, it will stretch 17 km between Cavite and Corregidor Island, and more than 14 km between Bata and Corregidor Island. The project will involve the construction of two cable stayed navigation bridges, the North Channel Bridge, with a main span of 400 meters. 
In the South Channel Bridge with a 900-meter main span, standing at a water depth of approximately 50 meters. Land viaducts, marine viaducts, and ancillary buildings will also be constructed under the project. It will connect Bata and in the north, and Cavite in the south, the two adjacent provinces of Metro Manila. This cable-stayed bridge has sped up travel from 5 hours down to just 30 minutes between Bata and Cavite. The enormous savings in time has spelled convenience for those engaged in business and trade in the region and has ensured sustained economic growth for both provinces. As another intervention to address Metro Manila's persistent problem with traffic congestion, the Bata and Takaviti Interlink Bridge will introduce new expansion and economic growth opportunities outside of the metropolis. The Common Station of Manila, or dubbed as Unified Grand Central Station is a state-of-the-art, rapid transit terminal, and transportation hub along EDSA, located between SM City North and the Ayala Mall Trinoma. This unified station will feature a 13,700 square meters concourse area, which will seamlessly connect the rail lines of LRT Line 1, MRT Line 3, MRT Line 7, and MRT Line 9 of Metro Manila Subway. Aside from the rail lines, this common station will also connect to the EDSA bus carousel through the EDSA busway, and to the transportation hub terminals in the area. Once operational, the common station is expected to serve approximately 500,000 passengers per day. And can serve up to 1.5 million passengers daily, once the MRT Line 7, and MRT Line 9 will be fully operational. One Ayala Grand Terminal is an intermodal transport hub that will meld Makati City's mass transportation modes into a single, unified system. It is part of a 390,000 square meter transit-oriented development located on Ayala Avenue corner EDSA. This huge mixed transport-oriented development will feature a 20,000 square meter transportation hub terminal serving EDSA and Makati Central Business District with connections to the MRT Line 3 and EDSA Busway. Other major components include a business hotel, a condominium, two office towers for the robust BPO industry, and a retail podium with 54,700 square meters of leasable space for a full mall experience. It will also feature, safe, covered, and well-maintained elevated walkways, allowing commuters to get to their respective rides, and pedestrians to reach nearby destinations. The Unified Grand Central Stations and One Ayala are the nearly completed intermodal transport hub of Metro Manila that will complement the operation of the biggest and the first integrated and multi-modal terminal of the country, the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange or PITX.